Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is a weird video because it's I'm it's not a screen capture, but I'm reading from the screen and then I'm recording it on my phone. This is this is rare. I think I've done this like three times before. But um, uh, somebody put a comment uh, on the videos, but for some reason I can't copy and paste. And it's also I don't think there's a search function to make. Remember that really cool comment from 24 hours ago? So uh, if ever I see a comment where I'm like. Uh, Hey, I think I, I, I just, I, hey, can you email this to me because I can't copy and paste it um, from the app for some reason. So yesterday I did uh, <laughs> a video about the death of the, uh, the comic book industry uh, as an industry as defined by competitors that need each other. The concept is that you're not going to go into store because just Batman is on the stands, although with this Batman run, maybe. Uh, but you know, other weeks when you're like, Justice League dark and wolverine are in, no no like you need multiple books so that people can reasonably find i don't know one to three that they like and when the quality and even the amount goes down then it kind of just destroys everything uh but there was a, <laughs> a counterpoint oh uh apparently i got black swan incorrect I thought Black Swan was just an emergency that you didn't exactly predict, uh, but Black Swan means something completely different. It's a Black Swan. Uh, it is a an event that comes as a surprise, has a major effect, and is often inappropriately rationalized after the fact with the benefit of hindsight. So the, the other way that people said it is, it's something that was avoidable that you're like, how did this comic book industry suddenly collapse? Well, there's been thousands of videos telling you why and exact, exactly how it was going to collapse. And then it collapsed. It's like that line from, uh, well, I remember at the time thinking it was a later season, but now it's one of the earlier seasons of The Simpsons where Bart has a warehouse and he puts Milhouse in charge of being security. And then he comes the next day and it fell over. And you say, what happens? He goes, well, first it started to fall over and then it fell over. Uh, that, that's the mainstream direct market. First it started to fall over and then me and a dozen other people made 4,000 videos, literally probably 5,000 all told. Uh, and it fell over, you know, for the exact reason, you know, uh, a bunch of uh, pros, far leftists, who could not emotionally handle their candidate losing in 2016, decided to take their revenge upon the fans, upon the industry, and go on a hunt for phantom Nazis. And that hunt for non-existent Nazis has gone on for four years, and they've destroyed pretty much everything. Uh, so uh, Black Swan is not you changing the channel on your radio and you accidentally hit someone, and then you got a civil suit. Black Swan is the comic book industry collapsing after being warned about it for three years, exactly what would lead to their collapse. Uh, but the uh, so I basically said, well, um, the theory about needing other people is true. If there's zero other comic books, <laughs> you know, me four times a year trying to get people into comics, that's going to be pretty difficult. But you know, you know, if if people who, uh, there's there's some books that are kind of you know commonalities. I think generally anyone who likes Graveyard Shift and Cyber Frog is going to like Jawbreakers. With Iron Sights, you know, that's not superheroes, but I still think that you know the the Venn diagram crossover area will be fairly large. Um, but if it was just me by myself and nobody was crowdfunding, yeah, the, the interest would wane. So let's uh, uh, read this. Um, this person says, crowdfunding will be the death of comics for one reason. A popular comic, I think he's talking about crowdfunding comic, is backed by 2,500 people. That means only 2,500 people will read it. That is pathetic. Plus, unless someone starts a site to compile Kickstarters into a review type setting, how do you even find a comic? It's like trying to find a video on YouTube. There is so much noise, you will just get lost trying to scroll through it all. So individual creators will make a living for a while. Then all the enthusiasm will leave the buying public and it will all go away. Comics will be online slash digital webtoons, and manga. Manga will still live as they have a robust third-party review system and, and advertising such as Crunchyroll and forums where people keep up on it. Kickstarter comics are living in the now, not knowing 
it's going to kill everything in the future. I think this, there's a lot of good stuff right here. <laughs> and before I start, I just want to say I appreciate this comment. I respect it. I am going to counterpoint your counterpoint in some uh, regards. So um, let's just start with the numbers. 2,500 people. So, you know, I have all these graphs. Uh, I track all of my stuff and then I track all of Brian Polito's stuff. Brian Polito kind of has a predictable model about four projects per year and he's had steady growth. I think he's a little bit, I think he's leveling off recently, but it's good. He'll have like 2,500 backers, 300,000 plus dollars, and um, it's profitable. I think he employs a couple people full time and a couple other people uh, part time and he has his own warehouse. It's, it's a great situation. I consider it to be a model. Not exactly the model I want, but a good comparison. Um, but after four years, Brian Polito still has not sold as much as I think almost all of my books. I think he's only <laughs> outsold um, uh, Do As You're Told. That's the only one. Uh, and uh, But then you even look at like uh, Keanu Reeves' Berserker, which is doing fantastic. Let me go click on this. And <laughs> it's like it's a screen capture video, but it isn't. Uh, so it's been up for like six or seven days. Two thirds of a million dollars, 664,000, but 6,200 backers. And I mean, this is Keanu Reeves. The thing is, and this is, I don't think this is a surprise to anyone, not a lot of people read comics. In fact, less people read comics now than probably have ever existed. And that is dangerous because, you know, there's, it's not like it'll, you know, slowly scale from, uh, like, at some point it just hits <laughs> a tipping point. And then there's a lot less stores, there's a lot less conversations, and then you just kind of forget about them. I was, I'm not, I don't watch a lot of TV shows, but I have noticed that I have never said, I will not watch Arrow anymore. I go from watching every episode to missing a couple and catching up to missing a couple and, oh, this is the crossover. They'll catch me up on all the subplots to forgetting it exists. The conscious decision to not watch Arrow or Flash um, doesn't exist. It's just losing interest and then forgetting it exists. And that's a danger for everything. Uh, everything that a human like, they cannot like and just kind of forget about it. Uh, so that is a danger. And I mean, how many people know who Keanu Reeves is? Three billion? Um, how many people claim to love comics? I don't know. At least a couple billion. How many bought Keanu Reeves's comic in the first week? Six thousand. That's like less than the population of Papillion, Nebraska, and like when I was <laughs> grew up there in the eighties. Like it's it's really really low, um, but it's still highly profitable, worth everyone's time. But um, the person who wrote the counterpoint, they made a good point. Uh, they said, uh, you know, this is basically loss of interest, loss of discussion, and an interesting one. Uh, so he, he he uses the phrase Kickstarter, but it's I think he's using it's like when people call you know all soda Coke, uh, or uh, you know I think he's using it as a as a broad term. Uh, but we got these things like uh, this Comic Speed, which is a, a, a supposed news organization, a news site, um, and they have a crowdfunding uh, review every single week, and every single week they refuse to acknowledge that Indiegogo exists. Um, petty, childish, yeah. Uh, I, I always just think about this. It's like, um, it's funny to describe something in a, like an atypical way. A journalist's job is to not be corrupt because they're a source. You're supposed to be able to trust them. When you're a journalist and you're corrupt, you're literally screwing up the one thing that you have to do. That's it. Just don't be corrupt and describe things and, and give some context. I mean, when you say, oh, crowd, crowdfunding roundup, and then you're uh, gatekeeping Indiegogo, it's like, what's going on but yeah so there's all sorts of gatekeeping and blacklisting um, and uh, but there's a couple of you know flaws in this how do you find thing well YouTube has a recommend feature um, uh, Google has you know geez they had that Netflix movie on the origin of Motley Crue and like for the next freaking year Google thought I was Motley Crue's you know <laughs> Number one fan. I just I, I read a couple articles when there are a bunch of articles out and jeez, uh, 
Um, but uh, you know their algorithm has something of, you know, you know, clicked on three articles within 24 hours. Uh, this person is Motley Crue's number one fan. Um, but there's a recommend feature. There's an algorithm that analyzes your viewing behavior and says, oh, you might actually uh, like this. I always love Cecil's um, origin story about getting into comics. He says he just noticed things were weird and he went to YouTube and typed like, what is wrong with comics? <laughs> <laughs> and then he found, you know, a bunch of channels that he ended up uh, liking. So the recommend feature is huge and the discussion uh, is, you know, constant. Um, so one concept that I want to create, you know, it's in the title, is the idea of comicsness. Comicsness is the concept of while comics are not numerous and found everywhere, like they used to be found at convenience stores and grocery stores and drug stores, in America. Let me know how it was in Europe. I know you have like the news agent at like the freaking Bonhof, you know, the, the train station. Uh, but you know, what, what they sell in the UK, Beano? Where do, where do you buy Beano? Um, uh, geez, man. Beano is like, it's so weird. You know how you always have these people like, I've never seen Star Wars. Everyone who ever grew up in the UK loves Beano. I don't think there's any comparison in any other culture to the you know omniscient you know uh, omni love of Beano <laughs> I think Beano is kind of like a Dennis the Menace type of character I don't know I, I just know you talk to Brits you mentioned Beano their eyes just light up and they turn into like anime eyes <laughs> you're like Beano um, but uh, <laughs> should I hey Brits out there uh, put in the comments let me know if you want this to become an albino uh, review channel. But anyway, so there's YouTube. So there's not only reviews and discussions of comics, but there's recommends. So the concept of comicsness is, are you aware of comics? Have you not forget, forgotten them? And do you have a general like of them? And I think as long as comicsness prevails in culture and conversation and online, I think crowdfunding can survive. I have talked before about, you know, the death of the store is a problem because, you know, but I get so many people to say, I quit buying comics and stores three years ago. I just buy um, crowdfunding, mainly Indiegogo. Um, people are, people are, there's been enough good projects by normal people, Todd McFarlane, Keanu Reeves, on Kickstarter that people, uh, they're they're going to Kickstarter, but they're kind of holding their nose. They're like, generally, I would not go to Kickstarter, but everyone likes Todd McFarlane. Everyone likes uh, Keanu Reeves. So as long as there is comicsness, there are movies based on comic books, TV based on comic books, discussion of comic books, cool projects like Keanu Reeves' uh, Berserker. I do think crowdfunding can survive. And it's kind of going to be a moot <laughs> point because enough of the people that you've heard of that you... Uh, have a good, you know, uh, you know. There's, I'm sure there's going to be a Grant Morrison and Neil Gaiman and, uh, and a, I don't understand. I think everyone's always like Chris Claremont wants to write the X Men, but then like every time I see the picture of him, he's just like glowing with peace and calm and prosperity. I think he's doing fine. I think he's doing just fine. I think he re renegotiated something at some point, and he's just sitting pretty. Boy, he is like. <laughs> I, I, just as all Brits love Beano, find me a picture of Chris Claremont looking anything other than like beatific. Like, I just, I just ex expect him to like sprout wings. He's like, I'm going back to heaven now. It's actually where I live. I summer in Central Islip, but I live in heaven because I'm just so happy. Um, uh, but uh, comicsness, as long as that prevails, I believe crowdfunding will do good. And it's also, it's gonna be one of those weird things where it's like, crowdfunding is going to be comics. Now, one of the things I've gotten, you know, hemmed up is I'll say comics, and they're like, oh, he said all comics are gonna die, but Raina Telgemeier and manga. Okay, I'm American, I grew up in the Midwest. When I say comics, most of the time I'm referring to the direct market, Marvel, DC, Image. That's what I call comics. Uh, I've learned to say the direct market and then people, you can't get him back. But I think basically everyone, you know, context, you know, matters. Oh, I'm going to rebrand the channel. Context matters with your boy Zach. 
Um, so as long as comicsness prevails and there's a general good feeling of comics and an interest, uh, but like I said, it's, it's kind of going to be moot because there's going to be so many people from the direct market, from quote unquote mainstream comics in crowdfunding that it's, yeah, it's just, oh, you know, it, it's, you know, wait, <laughs> it's just going to be like so oldie Olsen. It's like, grandpa, tell, tell how you bought, um, amazing Spider-Man number 288, uh, well, I got into my non-electric car, and then everyone starts laughing, <laughs> and I drove it. I was like, oh, shit, Grandpa used to have to drive his car. <laughs> uh, your internal combustion engine car that has to be driven. Um, uh, and, and then I drove across town hoping that they weren't sold out or the copies were dog-eared, and then I drove back. Because, like, what the hell is wrong with you, Grandpa? You stupid. It's like no you watch youtube videos or you you know get a recommend on facebook or instagram or wherever and then you go check it out and then oh look, oh, it's, oh it's doing really good six hundred thousand. this must be pretty popular and you buy it and then you get mailed it and then that that that's how you get comics what are you talking about old man future is now old man uh so anyway that's my theory um i think you had a lot of good points in this but i think the concept of comicsness now, if they stop making Marvel movies and X-Men movies and Batman movies, if they stop making TV shows, and if no really interesting crowdfunding campaigns come out, yeah, I can see where this would just fade and it would just become, hey, remember comics? Oh, yeah. Do they still make those? No. Um, uh, but I think uh, it's, it's kind of a terrifically exciting, and uh, it's just... You just can't be scared, man. You can't be like, oh, no. God, I, I, I have these emails and they're tragic. I'm like offering people jobs and they're like, this money would be life changing, but they're afraid of the 12 psychos on Twitter. Um, but you just got to go out there, man. It, it's, 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 what is that line from uh, 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 Alec Baldwin? You take it, you, it's yours. You don't, I got no sympathy for you. Come on, it's just, it's just out there. That is just waiting to be taken. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe, Patreon, and the Indiegogo. Funding original content and unoriginal lawsuit. Links are in the description. And I'll have more uh, new comic reviews up all this week. Thanks. Bye.